Hey everyone, just taking a quick 15 seconds to let you know that my new book, The Fitness Mindset, Eat for Energy, Train for Tension, Manage Your Mindset, and Reap the Results, which hit the bestseller list within 24 hours of its release, is now available to buy on Amazon. So if you're looking for everything you need to get into incredible shape and the mindset to keep it forever, be sure to check it out. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. You're listening to the Brian Keane Fitness Podcast, where Irish fitness entrepreneur Brian Keane answers your questions and interviews leaders in the world of fitness, health, mindset, and natural wellness. To share tips about all things that can support you on your journey to becoming the best version of yourself and build a bulletproof mindset to get whatever you want out of life, come join the fun. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Brian Keane Fitness Podcast. We talk everything fitness, nutrition, and mindset to help you with your goals. Today's episode is going to be a little bit more of an anxiety episode, a little bit more of a mindset and lifestyle episode. Um, I've been getting a lot of feedback recently on the anxiety section of my book, The Fitness Mindset, and the podcast episode I did on how to overcome anxiety. Um, I've done a lot of content on that as someone who's came through the other side um, and understanding that the majority of people, and for those of you listening, at some stage in your life have probably experienced some form of anxiety. Now, I didn't have a label to put on it for a long period of time. Um, sometimes I would just get mild panic attacks before first dates and things like that, and I didn't know that it was anxiety attacks I was having. Um, and regardless of how it shows up for you, whether it's chronic, where you're constantly stressing out about exams, or different days that you have at work, or people that you'll be coming into contact with, or if it's just environmental at that moment in time when you have a new job interview or whatever it is that we all seem to deal with it in some way shape or form um, and it shows up differently in different people's lives so I'm going to spend this episode talking on how to overcome anxiety over the long term and um, so for those of you who read my book The Fitness Mindset which is my best-selling book it was eight weeks on the bestseller on Amazon and then back on the bestseller list again recently but one of the section that was very very I've received a lot of positive feedback and direct messages from was the anxiety section in the mindset because stress worry anxiety or the figurative death by a thousand cuts in terms of getting into shape um, and I've had people come through my programs who have tried 10 other programs beforehand and by all means I'm not saying go through my one it's the best one because there's other amazing programs out there but I've had a lot of people come through programs who have been training hard and eating well but had never dealt with the anxiety or stress or worry that was going on in their life and the amount of cortisol that was seeping through their body so they were never really able to change their composition and it wasn't until we started building in lifestyle hacks and started fixing their mindset in terms of the way they see in the world or the environments they were in or the people they were surrounding themselves with did their body start to change and um, so i'm going to spend today's episode on how to overcome the anxiety over the long term to either benefit you or your loved ones or the family members that you spend the most time with or just to change your body composition for someone that has been eating well and training hard and you just can't seem to get that last bit down. You can't seem to get your body fat down because you're worried or stressed all the time or you're constantly dealing with anxiety through a boss that you're working with or uh, an abusive relationship that you're in emotionally or whatever that looks like for you in terms of it may not be sexual or physical in any way, shape or form, but an emotional response that your mom is shouting at you or your dad is shouting at you all the time or they're constantly belittling you or whatever that shows up in your life that being able to deal with that and understand it may be the thing that's stopping you getting to your physique goal that you're trying to achieve or even just get your life to where you want it to be in terms of your happiness level. So hopefully today's episode will provide you with a lot of value for those of you who have had chronic anxiety or constantly stressed or worried. And for those of you who just deal with it every once in a while, when you come into contact with somebody or you come into some environment where you don't feel comfortable, hopefully I'll be able to provide a lot of value for everybody that's listening. So the first bit is understanding that dealing with anxiety and stress and worry and I'll use those interchangeably because they're not necessarily the same things but they kind of come up in different ways anxiety and fear aren't necessarily the same thing this is probably one of the biggest misconceptions that I had fear is something where there's actually an external threat that could potentially cause you harm and anxiety is the a feeling that an immediate threat is going to cause you harm but there's an absence of anything that could actually physically cause you any harm so fear is if you saw a saber tooth tiger in the wild in the savannah thousands of years ago you would get a fear response it's a cortisol response where your body would release its stress hormones so you can go into fight or flight mode or fight flight or flee mode that's evolutionary 
biological driver of what's going on when we see something and we get frightened. Anxiety is all of those responses, but there's no immediate threat. And it's normally from the thought of something bad about to happen. So staying awake, worrying about not having enough money or not finding a partner so that you die alone, which is the crazy story sometimes I've told myself and other people I'm sure have told themselves that you're worried you won't find the right person who'll be your soulmate or be your partner for life or you're worried that you're not gonna have the body composition that you want or you're not gonna be able to make a football team or a hurling team or a sports team that you're trying to get and try out for. That's all anxiety. It's all thinking about what can go on in the future. And one of the reasons that we have this is as a species, one of the reasons that human beings in general have been able to evolve and become the top of the food chain is down to what's effectively our developed prefrontal cortex, which is their neocortex, neo mean new. It's the prefrontal, it's the front part of your brain, which because we have developed that and it allows us to envision things in the future, it's one of the reasons we're top of the food chain and have been able to build civilizations. We've been able to build things like computers and the internet and all these incredible things that can help and serve and move our species forward. But as a result, because we have that, we're able to constantly think about things that may go wrong in the future. And I spoke in my book and in the section that got a lot of feedback and got picked up by a lot of press and different newspapers and radio shows and TV shows even recently was the section on why your dog is happier than you. And I spoke about the fact that when your dog sees you, they don't have an overdeveloped prefrontal cortex. Other species and mammals don't have that part of their brain developed. So every time they see you, they're not worried about next time they're gonna see you. They're not worried about are they gonna get their meal that day. They're not worried about paying bills. They're not worried about any of these things because they haven't developed that part of their brain. Understanding that we have a species because we've developed our prefrontal cortex, we can see into the future and we can pull things back into a reality. It's one of the reasons that when they talk about seeing things in your mind's eye, which is effectively just a law of attraction where you think about something and you use your reticular activation system, which is your cognitive neuroscience of your GPS, your internal GPS in your brain, where you focus on something and you start seeing it more. So if you, if you see a... For example, a pair of shoes that you've bought, a pair of Adidas or Nike trainers, and you go into a gym and you see somebody else with them, you're gonna spot them straight away. That's your reticular activation system kicking in. It's telling your brain what to focus on. Whereas if you had never bought those red Nike shoes, you'd never have noticed them. That effectively is all because our brain is developed in a certain way. But because we have all these incredible things and it can allow us to basically build the life we want, once you see the things you want, once you see the body you want, once you see the job you want, once you see the person that you want to spend your life with and you can envision that person, you'll start to focus on the people that have those attributes. You'll start to focus on the jobs that can provide that to you. But on the flip side of it, it's also something that can lead to a lot of anxiety because we're constantly worried about what's going on in the future and dealing with things that, that are causing us anxiety is something that when you build some of the strategies that I'm gonna speak about in this episode and you start applying them every single day, you're gonna be able to manage it and as a result, you're gonna feel so much better and happier over the long term. And as a result, you may reduce your cortisol and change your body composition. It's a byproduct of feeling a lot better in your body and not having that constant cortisol stress release response. But it's very important to understand that dealing with anxiety and dealing with stress is like sweeping the floor. If you can sweep the floor in your kitchen today and it's gonna be clean, but if you leave it for two, three, four, five days, it's gonna get dirty again. And that's what your mindset is like. It's the exact same, that you have to stay on top of it every single day, being positive, being grateful, or whatever strategies you use that work for you, it's very, very important that you stay on top of it every single day, following the right people. That's why I tell you and regularly, and I speak and I put myself into this bracket, that when you're following people on social media, or you're following people on podcasts or audiobooks, or people you're reading about, and they're not supporting you and becoming a stronger version of yourself, you need to unfollow them because the people and the information you put into your mind is gonna dictate the actions that you take and the actions you take dictate the direction of your life. So it's so important that you audit the information that you consume. And I'm the first person to say that if I'm that person that is making you feel bad about yourself and it's not a mirror or projection of me calling you on whatever story you're telling yourself and I'm genuinely not helping and support you, then unfollow me. But I ask you put everybody else into that bracket as well because it's about you becoming a stronger version of you and it's like sweeping the floor. You have to do it every single day. If you listen to me or you listen to some other fitness person or 
a health or mindset person and they're helping you become a better version of you, then consume some of their content every day or every week or every month or whenever it comes out because it's helping you become a better version of you. That's sweeping the floor, but you gotta stay on top of it every single day because otherwise the floor gets dirty. Your mind effectively goes back to default. They say in the University of London it takes 66 days to form a new habit and I love the the quote that the chains of habits are too loose to be felt until they're too strong to be broken and it's very very important that you follow the right people and consume the right information consistently because when you form those bad habits and you put garbage into your mind by reading bad books or following bad people and quote unquote bad in terms of uh, I mean by not supporting you becoming a better version of you or you watch garbage on tv or you read tabloid papers that are going to get you focusing on all the things that aren't supporting you that's sweeping the floor in the incorrect way you're making the floor dirtier so the anxiety that's coming with that is down to taking ownership that what you consume and the people you follow and the books that you read and the papers that you consume and the tv shows that you watch are all down to those ones you've decided to put into your mind so when you know the ones that are helping you and supporting you double down on those and consume their information every single day until it becomes your default thought process. One of the reasons I've been very, very fortunate to have shifted my mindset over the last probably two years is consuming the right information, reading people like Marcus Aurelius, reading people like Seneca, Stoic philosophers who really resonated with me. I don't necessarily recommend reading their books because they're Greek philosophers. Marcus Aurelius is the former emperor of Rome and his book Meditations is an incredible read. It's a game changing book and changed my entire life, but it's very, very hard to access if you're not familiar with Stoic philosophies in general and I do recommend reading a book by Ryan Holiday it's called The Obstacle is the Way which was my introduction into Stoic philosophy and was largely the book that changed the trajectory of the way I saw the world and has as a result has allowed me to deal with some of my own demons my anxiety my stress my worry my comparison of other people dealing with ego ego being the enemy and all these external things that I wasn't taking ownership of and I was playing victim of thinking that oh well the world is against me when you take ownership that every decision you make and every thought that you have is your decision it's your thought every emotion you feel you've chosen to feel that emotion and when you understand that consuming the right people that are going to support you long term and you do that every single day and you stay on top of it like sweeping the floor, it leads to a much happier and less anxious and less stressful mindset. So the next thing then for dealing with anxiety over the long term or dealing with stress and worry is a little bit of a trial and error because the truth is there is no one size fits all and I'll get asked this in variations in different areas like what's the best training program or what's the best nutritional plan or what are the best supplements for building muscle or losing fat and the truth is if there was only one training program or one nutritional plan or one supplement that help you build muscle or lose fat then everybody would do that and everybody would look the way they wanted to look mindset and anxiety is very very similar if there was only one strategy that everybody did and they'd be happier if there was only one meditation if there was only one training system if there was only one way to see the world and everybody would be happier then everybody would do that and everybody would feel the way they wanted to feel one of the things that it's very important to do is trial and error with different things that work for you and cut the things that don't and double down on the things that do and there may be things in this episode, there may be things from somebody else you're listening to or somebody, something else you've read, but try it and experiment with it. I've spoken in other podcasts in the past that I like to see my life as one giant experiment and I'm constantly experimenting with different things and with the things that are working, the things in my business, the things in my relationships, the things in my life, the things in my training, the things that are working, I double down on them and the things that aren't, I cut them or at least they give me a reference point on taking the best bits from them and then applying it to what's applicable to me so for example i don't follow a paleo diet but i love the fact that paleolithic is mainly whole foods but i do a lot of particularly now with my training for the marathon de sable which is 256 kilometer run through the sahara desert in morocco i need a lot more carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates to refuel my glycogen a lot of ga players that i work with are the same if they're following paleo sometimes it helps to have complex carbohydrates to come through your system so you can replenish your glycogen stores so parts of it are incredible take what's applicable to you and then double down on it however just because somebody has said well this is what works you have to try it yourself and i'm speaking myself on that probably the only difference 
between the way that I work with my clients is I don't have a one size fits all approach because not everybody is the same. I have baselines that work. I like working for tension for people that are trying to change their body composition. I like high intensity interval training because it works better at getting a better bang for your buck and changing your body composition faster and you have to spend less time. I like eating whole foods and trying to avoid processed foods and sweeteners as much as possible for the majority of people I work with. That being said, there's some people who come through who work way better with low intensity steady state cardio. They work way better with heavier weights. They work way better factoring in things like protein bars and different sweeteners because it helps to keep them on track long term. There is no one size fits all for nutrition or training and there is no one size fits all for mindset. You have to try what different people say and then what works for you, keep that. You're gonna have people come on a podcast and come on to videos and say, Everyone should meditate. Meditation is incredible, and if you don't do headspace or meditation, then you're always gonna be stressed. But you may try that and it may not work for you. For example, I tried headspace and I tried different meditation techniques and it didn't work for me. But what does work for me is things like training, things like running that puts me into a, a, a flow state, which is transient hypofrontality. Transient meaning you're effectively, transient hypofrontality meaning you're switching off your prefrontal cortex. That part of the brain I spoke about, where you're constantly envisioning the future, worrying about the bills you're gonna pay, worrying about your job interview tomorrow, that transient hyperfrontality switches off that part of the brain. Running does that for me. It just switches it off. A lot of runners get what's called runner's high. It's where they're switching that off. Musicians get the same thing. Athletes get the same thing. People that paint or write get the same thing. You drop into what's called a flow state. Mihal Shehex Mihai was basically pioneered the study on flow state and has been largely picked up by people like Stephen Kotler. He's an incredible book called The Rise of Superman that speaks about extreme sports and people dropping into flow states that are doing extreme sports. And for me, that works. It's one of the reasons that I get so edgy and anxious when I go three, four days without training because it drops me into a flow state. Training for tension and focusing on mind-muscle connection where I'm constantly trying to feel the muscle I'm working completely disconnects me from the world. Running sends me into a flow state. When I was playing GEA, and I, unfortunately I don't get to play as much as I did when I was younger, Playing GA and playing sport dropped me into a flow state. It completely disconnected me from the world and that was my meditation because I struggled to sit on a yoga mat for 20 minutes or half an hour and just try and focus on my breathing. It's not something that supports me and again, it's something I'm sure I'll come back to and I'll try and find deprivation tanks or float tank or something equivalent that will force my mind to switch off. But right now, I know that training works for me every time. Running works for me every time. Playing sports works for me every time but you may find that that's not what does it for you. You may find that drawing does it for you, that painting does it for you, that writing does it for you, listening to music, going for a walk. That may be your meditation. So find what works for you and then double down on that and keep note of the things that are supporting you and when you realize that the other systems aren't just because I said it should work or somebody else said it should work doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work for you. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna share a couple of things that I've trialed and experimented with. And what I would do with this is the ones that land and resonate with you, try them. And if they work, try them for seven days, try them for 14 days, try them for 21 days. And if they work, keep them consistently in your routine. So one of the things that I, as someone who has dealt with anxiety and stress and worry, and all these other things that go on in life. And I'm in a very, very fortunate position with the life that I live, the business I have, where I have a job and a life that basically are one and the same. I have what's called a non-job, where I'm very fortunate to be able to live my life and earn an income and do very, very well and have a business that basically I would do for free. So I, my version of success for me was waking up every morning knowing that if I won 100 million euro, I would still do what I'm doing for free. I would do the podcast, I would do the videos, I would do my Q and A's because I love doing what I do. And one of the things that has really, really helped me with that is staying on track with it and pulling myself back into the present. There's a great book by Dale Carnegie called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. And he speaks about living in daytight compartments where we're really just focused on the moment that's right now. Um, and again, there's Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, which I didn't get as much from, but the message is similar, that there is no future effectively. It hasn't happened yet. And the past is gone, we can't change it. But we have the power of what's going on right now. We're living in that daytight compartment. And for me, 
every time I felt my mind wandering to something that I was worrying about, worrying about not paying a bill when I was living in London, which was a time of very stressful for me in terms of subjective stress. There was a lot worse going on in the world, but for me at the time it was subjective stress because I wasn't earning a lot of money and I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to pay my bills every month, but paying my bills, worrying about not finding the right partner, worrying about not being a good enough dad before Holly was born, all these things that afflicted me pulling myself back into the present moment and asking, right, what can I do about this right now? If there was something I could do in this very moment in time, I would do it. If there wasn't, then I would forget about it, realizing that it's something about the, in the future that I'm worried about that hasn't even happened yet. Living in day tight compartments can massively support you with that. So one of the systems or one of the strategies that worked for me was reading that book by Dale Carnegie. It was actually the audio book I listened to on the Audible app how to stop worrying and start living and then taking because you can read whatever you want but if you don't apply it it's the same as not knowing knowing and not applying is the exact same as not knowing so it's important that when you find something that works and you trial it and see if it experiments that you experiment with it and see if it works for you then at least you know that is it going to work the day tight compartments works for me because every time I feel my mind wandering, I pull myself back to this present moment and I try and be completely present. And if it's something I can do about it right now, then I do it. For example, I had this horrible habit and I'll call it a habit because when you're doing things automatically, they're effectively habits. And I had this really bad habit of when I was working, I would feel bad about not spending time with my daughter. When I was spending time with my daughter, I was feeling bad about not working. And it was the most ridiculous cycle that I got myself into. And I know a lot of other parents have something very similar. When they're at work, they feel like they should be at home. And when they're at home, they feel like they should be at work or whatever that equivalent is for you. And what I started to do was pull myself into the present moment. When I was working, I was working. I was getting the things done that I needed to get done. When I was with my daughter, I was being present with her and I was with her full on 100%. And every time my mind would wander, I would just pull it back. It was like a balloon going away that you just pull back the string until you had it under control again, or a kite or an umbrella or whatever it is that you wanna visualize in order pulling back. For me, it was a red balloon that was floating away that I would pull back. And living in daytight compartments really, really helped support me. And that's something that I do advise trying to pull yourself back into the moment every time you feel your mind wandering and experiment with that. The next one was, a one that I got from Tim Ferriss, who has one of my favorite podcasts, and I love his books, particularly the Tools of Titans books, where he interviews some of the top performers in the world of business and sports. And he spoke in the book in his book about a gratitude journal, which is effectively a 20 euro book. Um, I'm sure you could do this yourself with a fool's cap, but it's a book that just goes through your affirmations for the day and the first thing you do is when you wake up in the morning, you talk about the three things that you're grateful for. And what I found that works very well for me, and I did it for about three months and it did work, and then I actually started to do it automatically without writing it down, that I pull myself back and focus on the things that I'm grateful for. And what it does is it primes your mind. We have what's called a priming system. It's where you can plant an idea in your head. It's a basic human psychology where you plant an idea in your head and then it sits there. So when somebody drops you know, a price point to you in business or somebody drops an idea to you and then lets it sit, you're effectively priming that idea, you're setting them up. And um, like they say that if you look at your, there's a great study and it was in the book Practically Irrational by Dan Ariely, who's, Ariely, who's a behavioral economic psychologist, speaking on that if you look at the security number or you look at the number on your card on your master card or debit card or visa card and look at the last four digits and then you estimate the height of the eiffel tower and you're giving different options that you can use you're going to use one that was closer to those digits that you primed yourself with and it's a very 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 powerful strategy that business people use in psychology and marketing you'll see it on advertising with this priming of ideas but you can use that in a positive way to prime your day by being grateful for things that you have in your life. So as I got into this habit, and they say 66 days to form a new habit, so about three months, over three months, I was doing the gratitude journal. And before I knew it, I was waking up in the morning and I was automatically thinking of the things I was grateful for. The fact that I got to get up in the morning and do the thing I loved. The fact that I'd get to see my daughter later in the day. The fact that my mom was healthy and well. All these things, and I'd rotate between these six or seven things 
And before I knew it, I was doing it automatically every single day. And Tony Robbins regularly says, the motivational speaker Tony Robbins, I was very fortunate to work with him a few months ago. And he regularly says that it's impossible to feel depressed and, gra and grateful at the same time. Um, and what happens when you start priming yourself for the day by being grateful for the things that you have, you end up looking at the world completely differently for the entire day. So something that did work for me was getting that gratitude journal um, and writing down the three things that I was most grateful for. There's different questions in there, what would make today great, and all these other things that would prime your day. But the one that really stuck with me was the three things I was most grateful for. And then that set me up long term that I was able to do it without the book. So that is also something that may be worth experimenting with, even if it's just writing in your notepad on your phone or writing in a fool's cap or even just catching your first thoughts of the day and asking yourself, what are three things I'm grateful for and that'll allow you to set you up for the rest of your day. Okay, so on top of understanding the things that may support you and a couple of the strategies that I mentioned, for example, training for me, running for me, uh, my affirmations, my gratitude journal, those things all work for me. So experiment with those and trial those and the things that are working the best for you, definitely double down on them. But it's very important also to understand the different triggers that are in your life that are causing you to feel that way. This is probably the last thing that I was able to come to terms with because I suppose I didn't want to deal with the story I told myself that there were certain people in my life and certain environments that I was in that were causing me to feel stressed or anxious or unworthy or whatever label you want to put on it. And it's very, very important to understand that it's not always just you, that sometimes there are external things that are causing you to feel that way and be able to recognize them is so important. So one of the things that I would offer to definitely experiment with or to even just focus on, and hopefully for me mentioning this, it will trigger that reticular activation system in your brain, it'll trigger that GPS, that focus point in your brain, that you'll start looking at the people and the conversations that you're having and how you're feeling after those conversations with those people and it will start to land that you realize that there are certain people who are not supporting or serving you becoming the best version of you. The truth is, there are conversations with people that we'll talk to, and there's a lot of people in life that when you speak to them, you're gonna feel incredible after talking to them. You feel like they've given you some of your energy and you feel so much better, and I advise doubling down the time you spend with those people. But on the flip side of it, there's also conversations and people we spend our time with and what I call emotional vampires who end up sucking all the life out of us. That might be your mum, that might be your dad, that might be your boyfriend or girlfriend. It may be someone in your inner circle or someone you work with. You need to avoid the amount of time you're spending with those people because they're going to suck your emotional energy dry if you consistently spend time with them. And one of the reasons that you're consistently in an anxious state and you're in a stressful state is because you're in their environment. I had people in my life and I had family members who I particularly would be very, very close with in terms of location and, and geographically that... I didn't know how they were going to be when I walked into a room. And one of the things that I really struggle with is walking into a room and not knowing where I stand with somebody just because they've had a bad day and the fact that their projection may go on to me. I have a very, very close relationship with my mom in particular and, and my dad to a degree. But one of the things that, one of the things I've been able to reframe is one of the, that I struggled with when I was a teenager and a little bit as an adult until I was about 25 was I never knew what version of my dad I was going to get. So when I walk into a room, if he had had a bad day, everybody else was going to have a bad day because he would project it onto me and he would project it onto anyone else that was in that surrounding, particularly me because I'm the eldest son. And I would get, it would be projected onto me. But the flip would work if he had an amazing day, he'd be the best person to be around. And I, I love my dad. He's given me an incredible mindset in terms of my work ethic, in terms of the different ways that I see the world, in terms of even how not to see the world. I'm very grateful to have that. But I really, really struggle to walk into a room and not know where I stand with somebody. And one of the things that has allowed me to be pretty socially good with people is I never elect, let my day affect how I come across with other people. If I'm having a bad day, that's on me. I'm not gonna take it out on my mom or my daughter or my people that are around me. I'm not gonna take it out on them. I'm gonna deal with it myself because it's my shit. It's my stuff that's going on. And I'm very grateful to have that experience. But it, I understood for from the age of 25 or 26 on that going into a relationship with anybody, your, anyone in your family, anyone in your friend network, well, you don't know where you stand with them, put me into a very, very heightened state of anxiety. So 
I don't spend my time with people who I don't know where I stand with. So I know the people, my mom, Paul, my friend Dan, who's one of my best friends who lives in LA, the people who I spend my most time with, the people who are my inner circle of five people, I know where I stand because they don't let their mood dictate or their day dictate their mood and how they're going to show up with me. And I know that spending time with people who are like that, where they, they've had a bad day and it comes out on me, I can't spend time with those people because it ramps up my anxiety level. So understanding that there may be people who are very, very close in your life who make you feel that way. There may be just people who are having a bad way of seeing the world because of something else that's going on in their life and they're projecting their shit onto you. And we all have those people, those people who will tell you you can't do something, those people that will tell you that that's a stupid idea or your dream is stupid and it'll shatter your dream. You don't have to let other people's opinion become your reality, but understanding that just because somebody else tells you you can't do something or somebody else makes you feel a certain way, it's on you effectively because every emotion you feel and every situation you put yourself into, you have to take ownership of it because you've done it. You've decided to walk into that room. You've decided to move in with that person. You've decided to enter into that relationship. You've decided to go for that dinner. Those decisions are on you. You can make up all the fucking stories in the world you want. Go, I have to go. It's a family event. Or I have to go because it's my brother or my sister. No, you fucking don't. It's your decision and nobody's putting a gun to your head. We live in the Western world and we're very fortunate for the majority of people we have choice. We have free will and I'm not going to go into the argument inside of neuroscience that free will doesn't exist for a majority of people but for the majority of people we have what we call free will we have a decision on what we decide to do where we decide to be and who we want to hang out with if you know there's people in your life in your immediate circle that are making you feel anxious or making you feel insecure or making you feel unworthy about being a better version of you then it's on you not to spend time with them one of the things that I would advise that has really helped support me is when you can reframe it and you can't cut those people out of your life and in certain circumstances, you may have a boss or an employee or somebody or some, a work colleague you're around every single day who you can't physically put yourself into a different geographic location, but you can reframe what you see. You can reframe how you see the situation. There was a time in one of my gyms that I used to train in that I would go in every morning and there was a group of people who were constantly moaning and giving out about everything that was going on in their life. They would moan about their wife, they would moan about their kids, they would moan about fucking everything that was going on in their life. And I was, again, for a while, took had to take ownership of the situation because it was making me feel down. I was like, oh, this is, I feel horrible listening to this and being in this environment, it felt toxic. But then after a while, I started, a while I started to feel very grateful for being in that situation because it allowed me to see how I never want to see the world. That's a reframe of an idea. So when you're in a position, when I hang out with my dad now, who I have an amazing relationship with, and he's being negative about things that are going on in his day, it allows me to directly realize how I don't want to show up with my good daughter. I don't want to show up with my kids. I don't want to show up with the people I'm around. I never want my day to impact how I behave. You can reframe it as something positive to make you become a stronger version of you when you're not able to separate yourself from those people but it's very very important to understand that sometimes there are external things there are external envir environments there are external people who are going to make you feel anxious and then it's up to you what you decide to do with it you either cut them from your life completely and don't put yourself into those positions if you don't want to slip don't go to slippery places and if you don't want to feel anxious don't go to the places or to hang out with the people that make you feel anxious or you can't get away from them you have to choose to reframe it Everything is how we see it. There's nothing either good or bad. Thinking makes it so, and you get to choose how you decide to think. And then after that, it's about doing the right things every single day. Step by step, we get ahead. And it's not a case of, right, I'm going to do this meditation, or I'm going to stop hanging out with this person, or I'm going to read this book, and I'm never going to feel anxious again, or I'm never going to feel stressed again, or I'm never going to be worried again. That's not how it works. It's like sweeping the floor. You have to stay on top of it every single day. And one of the analogies I regularly use for getting in shape is like pushing a tire up a hill. It takes a lot of energy and effort to get it up the hill initially, but it's very easy to hold it at the top. That's how getting in shape is. That's how dealing with anxiety and building a stronger mindset is. It's difficult in the beginning because everything is difficult in the beginning when we start to do it first. But as you build momentum and momentum creates momentum and you start to learn the strategies that are working for you, it's very easy to stay on top of your anxiety. I'm somebody who, 
would actually feel, there was times when I got physically sick before first date because of anxiety attacks I had. There was times when I literally wouldn't leave the house because of just having a panic attack about what could go wrong. And then understanding that a reframe that at the end of the day, the things you had thought about that could go wrong. And even if you went the whole, played it out in your mind, the worst case scenario was never that bad. And the truth was, it never really went down like that. And there was first dates that I pulled out of. And I remember, and there's, there's regrets I have, where I would literally message somebody two minutes before I was to meet and be like, nope, can't go, feel sick. And it was all down to an anxiety attack. It was all down to a panic attack. I don't have those anymore because the tire is up at the top of the hill. You still get the feelings, you still get the anxiety, you still get the worry where your mind starts to drift into the future, but you pull it back. You pull the balloon back or you pull the kite back, whatever analogy or whatever version of visualization you wanna use that helps and supports you, you pull it back and you rein it back, but you only do that by doing it step by step and every single day. Ask yourself, did I get it right today? Because when you start adding up all the days, that's when you start to get better. And the truth is you may not get every day right. You know, you may have a day where you hang out with that person who made you feel bad. You may have a day where you just felt weak because you were coming down with a cold and you just didn't feel mentally strong and you let your boss get you and you felt anxious and you had to come home and moan to the people that were in your life. There's days we don't get it all right. Nobody is perfect and nobody gets it right every single day. But if you can get it right 80% of the time and you know the strategies that are gonna help and support you that you can turn to and that you can do and implement in your life when things are not going subjectively bad for you, you're able to implement it and deal with it as opposed to being the victim and thinking that it's the world and the external circumstances that are gonna constantly have an effect on you because at the end of the day, when you get it right every single day and you understand the strategies that work for you, you can deal with it, you can stay on top of it. And I'm speaking as somebody that came out the other side, your mess becomes your message. And I had to deal with it the hard way. And I had to go through all the strategies and I didn't realize what was going on with me. I thought there was something wrong. I thought there was something wrong with me for feeling anxious, for feeling panic, for feeling worry, for feeling stress. I thought there was something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you if you feel that way, but you, it is. there is something wrong if you don't make any changes to make your life better as a result. I came through it the hard way, and one of the reasons I'm creating this episode is for anyone that's working through it that is either starting to push that tire up the hill, or you're halfway up and need a bit of motivation, or you're nearly at the top, or you're right there at the top and you're just learning for a couple of more strategies that'll help you, this episode is for you, and I hope you get value from it because it's something that I think I would have got a lot of benefit from at 22, 23, 24, when I was in the height of dealing with my own issues. So hopefully you got a lot of value from this too. So that's everything from today's episode. Uh, hit me up on the DM on Instagram. Be sure to let me know if you got any value from this or if you don't like these episodes, what you'd like to hear more of. Do you want more interviews? Do you want more Q and A's? Um, everything I do on the podcast is all based off feedback from people. So be sure to let me know. A massive thank you to everybody who's reviewed the podcast on iTunes as well. Five star review is incredible. So thank you all so much who's taken the time to do that. And um, the only thing I'll ever ask, if you're listening to the podcast and find value, please just leave a review or tell a friend about it. Um, that's my oxygen for doing these podcasts. When people message me like my friend told me to check out this anxiety episode or told me to check out this other episode, um, that means so much to me. So thank you in advance for anyone that's done that. And thank you for those of you that are gonna do it in the future. So for more information about me, you can head over to my website, www.brankyfitness.com. Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram is all Brankey Fitness. My Snapchat's Brankey019 and my Best-selling book, The Fitness Mindset, is available in all bookstores in Dubry Bookstores in Ireland, on Amazon and the Book Depository online. Thanks for listening. Catch you all soon.